All right, good evening, everyone. We're going to start the meeting. <clears throat> We're going to have the invocation from Reverend David L. Dixon, Sr., Associate Minister at Traveler's Rest Missionary Baptist Church in Morrow, Georgia. Please, if you would, stand with me, after which we will have the Pledge of Allegiance. Let us pray. Eternal, all wise God, we thank you for this opportunity to, to come together. Thank you for this day. Thank you, O oh God, for these my sisters and my brothers. I pray, God, that you continue to keep us in your will and in your way. Continue to bless us, O oh God, as you see fit. Pray for the leaders of this county. Pray for all of these people that are gathered to discuss the business of the welfare of your people, God. I pray that you touch them in their heart. Let them thank God on one another, rather on them themselves, God. I pray that you have your way in this place. Bless it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening and welcome to the November 3rd, 2015 regular business meeting. The first order of business is the adoption of the agenda. Before doing so, does any member want to offer any amendments to the agenda? Madam Clerk, I would like to add to the agenda. agenda. <clears throat> I would like to ask for the planning and zoning administrator's position to be reposted and posted at a higher salary of 73000 uh, due to the fact that we are getting a little less than uh, average qualifications on those submitting applications. So we're looking for a, a better field of uh, qualified applicants. Is there a second? Second. <clears throat> Probably moved in second. Any questions on it? Mr. Chairman, I have a, just a, I, I'm supportive of the concept, but just administratively, aren't we supposed to have a human resources request to amend the job description and the salary? Job description is the same. We're just asking for the uh, salary to be increased. Okay, and so we can just do that as an, as an attachment to Ms. the Bright. agenda? Okay, yeah. If we can, that's fine. It's just in, in, in times gone past, it seems like we had something in front of us. I did conduct a, a survey of the metro area, and the survey came back at an average salary of 73000 And I just got all that information back today. So back to my concern about the operational or administrative, do we need to have a, a legislative request before us, or are we just amending the ad agenda to consider something the kid, that's consider not on paper? That's correct. To consider the reposting of the position. Right, but don't we have to amend the salary on the position before we can repost it with the new position? Ms. Bright, or can you help us out there, Ms. Barnes? I thought that it was for you all to increase the salary for the position and then to repost it. I may have misunderstood the what what That's you were what placing on the agenda. I he just asked that it be increase and then repost it. Did okay. you say that? All right, so we're increasing the salary of the- to say. Can we hear from, what, what was your- Now, are we making the civil service, non-civil service? Are we changing the benefits? Yes, Commissioner, to your question specifically, I believe we will have to <laughs> get the recommendation of the board, but I think it has to go before civil service first, and then the board of commissioners consider that once it goes before the civil service board, is my understanding of the regulation. Except that that's a non-civil service protected position. It, I didn't. I wasn't aware that it was a non-civil service protected mm -hmm. position. However, the civil service rules say that in order to start someone at a step higher than step one, that does require um, civil, civil service. service board and board of commissioner approval. My understanding of this is that it's not to start someone at a higher step than step one, but just to increase the salary. Right. Absolutely, because if it's voted down, it's a moot point. Therefore, once it's voted, then it can go through those steps to civil service board or whoever it needs to go through. And then once we get that person that we're looking to hire, if they are 
amenable to that salary, then we can hire them under, at that time, that salary. Now, is it a civil service position or not? Uh, according to my records, I show it as a civil service uh, position. Okay. All right. And uh, 73,000 would be a grade 33, which is 73,404 on our pay schedule. So the process would be we would approve just the posting and the listing at 73,000. Uh, once that has been approved, then it goes before the civil service. Civil service approves it, and then what if they don't? I thought it would go to civil service, service first. first. If you wanted to bring in your zoning administrator at higher than step one of whatever pay grade, that's what would go to the civil service board. So really, we don't have to amend it. We can just go ahead and hold the interviews, and if somebody agrees to the salary or not, but we the purpose of upping the sal starting salary is to get more interest in that position. Right now we have how many people who applied for it? And I'm not against that. I was just to say it again, administratively. I, I'm with you. I'm with you. I, we just want to get it right. So are we, is the request to change the pay grade from the current pay grade to a pay grade 33, which would have a starting salary of yes. 73,000? Okay. So then that that person, and unless that person would not accept a starting salary of 73,404. Right, that's a step one, isn't it? Right, that is so a step So if one. it's step one, we don't need to go to civil service for them to approve it. Correct. That's the step one. That, yeah, exactly, but we have to change the salary requirement first. But that's just administratively, procedurally. It doesn't need to go to, before anyone. We're just deciding. Is that right? You're, you're deciding to raise the pay grade to a higher pay grade, to right. grade 33. Okay, so Commissioner Edmondson, does that answer your question or not? Yes, yeah, so what you're doing is you're making a motion to add to the agenda consideration for the position of planning and zoning administrator to be moved to a grade 33 step one. Correct. And repost it. And to repost, and repost it. it at that salary. Okay. Okay, I'm clear on that. Good. Any other questions? Huh? Those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. Are there any further amendments? Uh, Ms. Davis, uh, resolution 2015-274 regarding the franchise fees for AT&T, we were discussing with legal earlier. I um, understand we may want to consider holding that off the agenda for some legal research. Yes. Yes. Is that a motion? Yes, sir. To hold. All right, I'll second it. Probably moving to second. Any questions? Hearing none. Those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. Are there any further amendments? Hearing none, may, may we have a motion to adopt the agenda with the approved amendments? Aye. Mr. Chairman, I move that we adopt the agenda with the approved amendments. Is there a second? Second. Probably moving to second. Those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. Approval of the October 20th, 2015 regular business meeting minutes. Mr. Chairman, I move that we approve the regular business meeting minutes from October 20th. Is there a second? I'll second it. Probably moving second. Those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. The board will now hear public comment. Mr. Chairman, we do have citizens that have signed up to address the board. Citizens will have a maximum of three minutes time limit to speak before the Board of Commissioners. Please state your name and county of residency for the record. Speak clearly into the microphone and speakers should be courteous, respectful, and not make any disparaging remarks or use abusive language when addressing the board. Reverend Joseph Weller, excuse me. <clears throat> Good evening. Members of the Clayton County Board of Commissioners, Mr. Chairman, <laughs> citizens of Clayton County, I'm Reverend Joseph Wheeler. I reside in Riverdale. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, I come again to let you know there's a compromise on the table. We want you to reinstate Chief Porter, let him serve out his retirement time. He served 29 years with Clayton County, loyal police service. He should retire honorably. Now, uh, you made some missteps along the way. I want to point them out. On August 18, I stood up here and addressed the body. And I told you it was wrong. Two days later, I got a call from Captain Jackson and Captain Rebecca Brown. They wanted to meet with me in confidentiality. 
I told him I wasn't going to do it until I meet with you, uh, Commissioner Edmondson, and Commissioner Rooks. L two days later, I got a call from Sheriff Victor Hill, who said he wanted to meet with me. I met with him. He sided with you, and I knew something underhanded was going on because you and Victor Hill never got along. So that was a problem for me. Next meeting, I came. You had police officers here, and Rebecca Brown was the one they used to speak for them. Now, I know there's a lot of articulate police officers at the Clayton County Police Department, but none of them probably wanted the job. They chose Rebecca Brown. I knew something was wrong. Then there was a parade of actors and actresses who came for this board to try to validate that weak premise that you have. But we realized that all of that was theatric. And the last gentleman who came up here at the last meeting used the honorable police officer who was falling in the line of duty. I thought that was very low. I was troubled by that when I went home because it told me that somebody's desperate. You're trying to defend a weak premise. It is not good if the chief had shot his wife or if we learned that he was a pedophile. I mean, give us something to work with, Mr. Chairman. I would go away. But we have n there's no reason for you to fire the chief. You have disrupted the chain of command at the police department. You, are, you don't have to accept the compromise, but you have to accept responsibility for dividing Clayton County and for that big cloud of suspicion hovering over the Clayton County Police Department. You have to accept responsibility for the bad publicity that Clayton County is getting. That award used to go to the, board of, the Clayton County Board of Education. Then it swung over to Sheriff Hill's office. Now it's at the Clayton County Commissioner's. You have to be responsible for that, not us. We'll be protesting on, on Tower Boulevard, Georgia 85, Highway 138 and Highway 54, and then we'll be at the police department itself protesting. What we want to do is broaden the discussion around the dinner table and at the water cooler. So it's not going away. We're all going to be locked on, and everybody, there's not going to be a rest for anybody in Clayton County as long as this matter is not resolved amicably. Now, the best thing for us to do is resolve it right because protocol has been broken. And there's the, the uh, chief register is not going to be able to restore the integrity of the police department. Excuse me, Reverend Wheeler, have. your three-minute time Thank limit has expired. Much. Thank you, sir. Carl Swenson. <clears throat> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening. Um, Carl Swenson, the CCCOC. And before you, I have laid a copy of the most uh, current 1789 Constitution, or most complete 1789 Constitution for the United States stand? of America. The same the document you take an oath to support and defend. That little booklet is your contract with We the People, a contract which you consistently violate, choosing instead to listen to the army of attorneys who use word art they defined through definitions in their Bible, Black's Law Dictionary. Another work of their word art is OCGA which has gone to great pains to write rules and regulations that all apply to the myriad of corporations and agencies that people have been led to believe are their government. There is but one law of the land, and you have that in front of you now. You always have had the choice whether to be in compliance or not, but by virtue of your choices, you have chosen to violate that oath. The first and most egregious violation stems from your continued reliance on that class of people known to all as esquires, defined in their own Black's Law Dictionary as a title of nobility above that of a gentleman and below a knight. See Article 1, Section 9, Clause 8 of that Constitution. How many... <clears throat> what does the Commission conceal when there are no specifics on a settlement with Brittany Cousins? We don't know anything about it. What are you instructed to hide from public view? Why is the party to an amended death certificate concerning Officer Wallace seeking to have it state he was not on official duty when responding to a 911 call in a police vehicle? Why was the person who failed to yield causing the officer's death not charged or pursued? Your handlers, the county attorneys led by Christy Barnes and Jack Hancock, are advising you in what I believe is a criminal fashion. It is also my belief that the reason for concealing the truth from the public stems from the lack of sufficient liability coverage due to a high incidence of claims against the county and, and its officers and or employees. How many errors and omissions uh, is okay with you when you're submitting documents to people through open records request? Because that's what we got. 
I requested uh, a copy of the certificate of liability. What I got was a document that basically said, don't trust this, this is just for informational purposes. But it did say that there was a million dollar self-insurance on there. Is that what we have been reduced to? Is that why we are now having to pull from county funds, operating funds, in order to pay for any of these settlements that occur? Errors and omissions. How about the, uh, the bond? We have one surety bond for you guys for your oath of office, Western Surety. It's signed by an agent or a representative who hasn't been able to sell that product for, since 2003. What's up with that? Mr. Swenson, your three-minute time limit has expired. Thank you, sir. Heather Medin, Menendorf. I know I didn't get that right. Could you please restate your name for the record and your county of residency? Heather Middendorf, CCOC. Um, what was that, ma'am? CCCOC, Clayton County Citizens Oversight Committee. What county is that? Oh, well, we're in Henry County. county but you, what county do you reside in? Henry. Thank you. Yep. Knowing that most of you do not speak legalese, yes, it's a real language. The Esquires who speak it will use their word art to convince you that it's all okay. It is not okay, and this is the nasty bed you've made for yourselves and the good and trusting people of this county. I ask that concerned peace officers, not the DA's office or Esquire's, work with us and review our findings and take appropriate action so that we can clean up this malfeasance and fiduciary irresponsibility. What is done in the shadows is itself a violation <coughs> of the public trust. Being a part of the CCCOC is an education into how this thing called government got away from the people. It drives home the fact, as I believe, that government is no longer working for us. It believes we now work for it, whatever it really is. This and what I have to say is my belief. Is everything being settled using self-insurance? The Esquires devised the current insurance and bonding scheme so that criminals and or uninsurable people can take seats they are not qualified to seek by virtue of not being able to bond up. Using shell companies to make people believe their government is properly insured and the elected are properly bonded. We at the CCCOC believe fraud is being perpetrated against the people of this county and further believe this is happening in most, if not all, of Georgia's 159 counties by virtue of the continued concealment of actions filed against the county. Clayton County is now in the nation's 10% of high-risk governmental <clears throat> corporations. The prospect for insurability remains bleak. Could this be the reason why crimes against the people of this county initiated or supported by the Esquires in control remain unprosecuted? What goes on in executive session stays in executive session. This is the Esquires version of transparency. Thank you. D. Corley. Hi, D. Corley of the CCCOC, Cobb County. Thank you. Um, people here wonder why this board even attempts to create a budget when the truth of the matter is that it doesn't. This work is done by the finance department. Now that's an interesting term, <coughs> finance department. Another creation of the Esquires, but why? That would be to put them under the control of this board who answer only to the Esquires and in this building rather than their proper place, working under the Clayton County Treasurer. Who is the Clayton County Treasurer? To hear the Esquires answer, this is the Finance Department. More errors and omissions. The proper place for that department is directly under the County Treasurer, Mr. Terry Baskin. To date, he has been the only man acting in honor and a covenant of Esquire controlled officials. And that's not only, and that's not the only convenient erasure of county officials by this monster organization called the Bar. How about the county coroner? They made that office disappear as well. Why? Because it's the only officer who could lawfully arrest an elected sheriff. A sheriff who now answers only to the corporate courts, not the people. Violations of the oath of office are now just a joke to supposed public servants. To the people of Clayton County, I ask, are you better served by Esquires who have removed the finance department from the county treasurer or not? 
Are you better served by having two constitutional offices erased, eliminating the checks and balances required for constitutional compliance? Or are you satisfied that the incorporation by these esquires of all things governmental is proper? Can anyone find a reason why Karen House, Karen's House of Shoes continues to be listed with the online yellow pages with an address of 112 Smith Street? Please tell us how the Esquires continue to justify that fraud upon the people. Why did this board allow such a blatant misuse of county funds used to create and maintain it, and why is it still in the yellow book and yellow pages online? Fraud is fraud no matter what you call it. How long before the people realize all of you are impersonating public officials? How long before a truly independent board of review is allowed in to clean this mess up? How long before this board of directors hears the clarion call to get out of the house? This can all be laid at the feet of the real criminals operating the fictitious courts and their agents, the Esquires. Thank you. Thank you. This concludes public comment. The board will now consider the request of Deborah Brewer, Director of Central Services. Hey, Ms. Brewer, before you start, I'd like to take a moment to read into the minutes of this uh, meeting a letter of findings. On October 6, Mr. Oscar Blaylock came before this board. He read a letter asking for an investigation and an indictment on my person for having a pub, uh, meeting at one of our local facilities. So it was presented to the district attorney, Tracy Graham, who did conduct an investigation, and she rendered the following findings, and I read from this letter. Stated October 27, 2015, and is addressed to Mr. Blaylock. Dear Mr. Blaylock, in your first letter, you alleged that Mr. Jeffrey Turner, chairman of the Clayton County Board of Commissioners, had misused county property for personal use on October 1st, 2015. In your second letter, you acknowledged that Chairman Turner personally paid for the use of the facility. We did, in fact, obtain proof of his payment. When the facility is rented, any lawful gathering is approved. The event was apparently aimed at trying to improve Clayton County and to develop strategies for that purpose. An attendee told us that was what the event was about. There is no violation of any law that was committed by Chairman Turner in hosting said event. Finally, and that I was neither invited to nor did I attend said event, there was no need for me to disqualify from investigating saying. Sincerely, Tracy Graham Lawson, District Attorney, Clayton Judicial Sist, uh, Circuit. Thank you. Please take yours all together, ma'am. Good evening, and thank you. Central Services has four items. The first is a recommendation for award 1530 ball field lighting weed lamp and electrical maintenance for Clayton County Parks. It's an annual contract with DECO Incorporated doing business as Davidson Electrical Company located in Covington, Georgia. Funding is available through the Parks and Recreation General Fund. The second is a recommendation for a sole source award for the purchase of a subscri subscription for a West Complete <coughs> Law, Libra Law Library program for the Clayton County Juvenile Court in the amount of $28,147.68 with West Thomas Rooters business located in Redmond, Washington. Funding is available through the Juvenile Court Department General Funds. The next is a memo to amend RFQ 2015-19 Influenza Vaccine Administration for Clayton County employees. The recommendation is to amend the language in Section 7 Governing Law of the Draft Agreement to reflect th that the agreement will be construed and enforced by the laws of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. And the final is an emergency contract for award of EMS medical supplies. And we did supply you with a copy of the contract. We sent in a placeholder for this, and we are still in negotiations with Boundtree Medical Supplies. The current vendor is ceasing operation as of November or at any a moment now, and we needed to find substitute suppliers for them. So the recommendations being made pursuant to Section 220 and 2128 and it's to approve the emergency contract award to Christian's Pharmacy located in Forest Park, Georgia, and Boundary Medical Supply located in Dublin, Ohio. Uh, the contract with Christian's Pharmacy has been confirmed for a term of six months. The one with Boundary Medical will, um, 
we understand will only be through December 31st, and we are still waiting on final documentation for that. Uh, we received notice, uh, verbal on October 23rd, and written notice on October 26th that they were ceasing business. We will award primary and secondary awards to each supplier so that we will have redundancy in uh, our supplies for them. The request is for you to approve the recommendation, authorize the chairman or his designee to execute all necessary documents to accomplish the intent of the contract, and authorize the chief financial officer to amend the budget accordingly. Is there a motion? I'll make the motion. Is there a second? Second. I'm probably moving to second. Any questions on any of the items? Uh, yes. Sorry. <laughs> Commissioner Hamburg. Yeah. On um, uh, is that Boundary Medical? Yes. Okay. Did you say they were going out of business? No. The Wilson Pharmacy that we had before is uh, ceasing operations, and okay. they notified us that they would not be able to honor their contract any further. And because of the critical nature of the supply EMS supplies, we sought out uh, quotes from these other two vendors. Okay. Commissioner Berger. Thank you. My question on the uh, influenza vaccine, Miss Bright, is she? Oh, I know Kaiser does the flu shots, but does the other medical? Um, plan provide for free flu shots. Just this is for the Aetna plan. Uh, oh, that's for the Aetna. Gotcha. That's it. Okay. Any other questions? Those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed. It's unanimous. Thank you. The board will now consider the request of Dennis Johnson, budget manager. Good evening, Commissioners. Before you, I have one budget amendment. Budget Amendment 4-39 in the amount of 53240 And that is to appropriate uh, funds from SPLOS fund balance uh, to provide a real mower for use at the Lovejoy uh, soccer fields. Is there a motion? Motion to approve. Is there a second? I'll second it. Probably moved and second. Any questions? Hearing none. Those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. Thank you. The board will consider the request of Renee Bright, Human Resources Director. Please take them together. First item I have is, is a request from the Sheriff's Office. It's a request for a reorganization that includes eliminating one Deputy Sheriff Lieutenant and one Correctional Officer position, creating a Deputy Sheriff Two position, and reclassifying two deputy sheriff two positions to two deputy sheriff sergeant positions, eliminate a correctional lieutenant position, and create a new classification of correctional captain at a pay grade 27, and then finally to create two part-time clerical positions, and this will result in a savings of approximately $17,000. The next is a request to reclassify the administrative assistant, which is a pay grade 16 position in the commission office, to an assistant to the chief operating officer at a grade 19 step five, with an effective date of July 1st, 2015, and funds are available to cover the additional cost for this request. Is that a motion? I'll make the motion, is there a second? Second. Probably moving to second. Any questions on either item? Uh, yes, I have one. On um, when is the number two to reclassify the vacant administrative position? And I saw two dates in the um, write up. Which, when is this effective? Uh, we're requesting that the effective date be July 1st, 2015. Why? That's the date she went into that position, unofficially. She was doing the work then. So that's retroactive? Yes, it would be retroactive. And that, that's not, let me back up, because that's not the date she actually went in. What day did she come over here to assume that position without the pay? April 23rd. It was April 23rd, and we're, uh, July 1st is uh, the start of the budget period. That's why we're going back to that date. But the person was being paid uh, for the position they were holding anyway. 
Why is it retroactive? Uh, additional duties and responsibilities. Where she was the administrative assistant for Parks and Recreation, which is one when she came over as the assistant to the COO, then she was tasked with keeping up with uh, roughly 22 departments through her administrative duties. Commissioner Hamburg, it would only be the difference in the salary. The difference in the pay. Oh, okay. It's not, okay. It's not on top of it. Okay. It's wherever Thank the you. Is. Okay. That's a little better. Thank you. All right. I it's have not written in here in, all, in the explanation, but okay. Commissioner That's Evans. better. The, um, the assistant to the chief operating officer, that position already exists? Mm -mm. No, that, that's okay. creating a, a new position. So when we had Ms. Anderson as our chief operating officer, we had, I think, Sloan? That's correct. Sloan was not the assistant to the chief operating officer? When that position became, no, when that position became vacant, that position, we vote, which we voted on to move it to the uh, TV23. So that position at that grade existed. We just moved it somewhere else. And actually, then now we're talking about moving somebody else up to that position and grade. Actually, wasn't the administrative position created in this year's budget? Yes. Okay, so we're, so we're just moving her over at a higher pay because she was she's an existing employee correct correct the 16 budget we added the administration assistant at grade 16 step one and this transaction would then um, uh, increase the pay to uh, grade 19 step five correct what is the grade that the existing position is in the one that was created no, 16. I got that. That's 16. Okay. The, so we're talking about Ms. Terry, right? So Ms. Terry came up from Parks and Recs and been working for Dietrich for the last several months. What, what grade and position is she currently at? She, that position's at a grade 18. So she's gone from an 18, but she hasn't lost any pay. She's be going from an 18 to a 19 is what we're talking about? Right, that's correct. Because of the added duties and responsibilities she had. Okay, so when it talks about moving from a grade 16 to a 19 and the difference being $6,936, so we're talking about the position, the, the grade 16 to 19 spread, or are we talking about her 18 to 19 spread? Because she's already getting paid for 18, grade 18. That's right, but she's actually being paid out of the Parks and Recreation uh, budget. Well, she was doing Parks and Recreation work. As well as work for the the COO. So the difference should only be from a grade 18 to a grade 19 difference because she was being paid grade 18. She's still being paid grade 18, right? Now she is, yes. So she wants to go from an 18 to a 19. Correct. The, this difference. Right, Dennis? You're looking at me like you disagree yeah. with that. Well, the, the budgetary impact, because you added the step, the, the position at grade 16, step one, in order to make it budget neutral, you need to go from that position that you added that is unfilled to this new position that you're creating assistant to the CEO. Then you're going to have a, a, a line item to move five. some money back to Parks and Recs from Board of Commissioners for the two-step difference. I mean, that's m one of many funding alternatives that you could have for, for that, yes. But when she vacates that administrative assistant's position at Parks and Rec, that goes back to step one. No, it's still a grade 18, though. It was a great. It's a great 18. Originally, it's a great 18. It's budgeted in Parks and Recreation, and it would become vacant at a grade 18, step one. Gotcha. Okay. But she's still only getting the difference of what she was making at Parks and Recs and what the new grade would be Absolutely. as assistant yes. for CRO. the only difference. So it's no more, she's not getting any more from a 16 to a 19. She's getting the difference between an 18, 18 and a 19, 19, regardless of how we classify it. Right. It's just that little small increase, right? Yes. That's correct. I know, but what I'm saying is it says right here, the vacant administrative assistant budget is budgeted at 31,000 and change. The new position is 38, the difference is six. And what they're saying is we wanna give her six thousand retroactive no that's the budgetary impact the impact to her personally would only be from 18 to the 19.5 or that would be the a increase third of that or whatever that is yes but in this case it's strictly the budgetary impact 
in the in the uh, commissionary, okay. which is the sixty nine thirty five. Any other questions? Hearing none, those in favor, aye. Aye. Oppose? Nay. Four to one. It passes. Thank you. Do you want me to present the... Oh, I thought you had. I'm sorry. <laughs> go, go ahead. <laughs> uh, and then lastly, I have the request to reclassify the planning and zoning administrator position from a pay grade 27 to a pay grade 33, and then I'll repost the position at that higher salary. All right, I'll make the motion. Is there a second? Second. Probably move them second. Any questions? Hearing none, those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. That's four to one. Thank you. Thank you. Christy Barnes, Chief Staff Attorney. Please take them together. Can we except take four, except for, go ahead. 271, 278, and 279. 271, 278, and 279. 278 and 279 is either or, right? That's right. They are. Yes. First is resolution number 2015-269, which is a resolution authorizing Clayton County to accept supplemental compensation from the state of Georgia for Judicial Secretary Glenda Hasty. In this instance, the county will be reimbursed $5,793 by the state annually, effective July 1st, 2015. Next is resolution number 2015-270, which is a resolution authorizing Clayton County to enter into a memorandum of agreement with the Prosecuting Attorney's Council of the State of Georgia and in accordance therewith, accept grant funds to be used in connection with the Victims of Crime Act and the Clayton County Solicitor General's Victim Assistant assistance program. These are reflecting grant funds in the amount of $35,825 with a local match of $8,956. Next is resolution number 2015-272 which is a resolution authorizing Clayton County to accept two seized vehicles from Clayton County Police Department drug investigations, to authorize the sale of such property in a manner as will be in the best interest of the county, to provide for the, sale, for the dispersal of sale proceeds, and this is for the seizure of a 2002 Mercedes-Benz E44S, E434S, and a 2002 Acura 3.2. Next is resolution number 2015-273, which is a resolution authorizing Clayton County to terminate its medical director agreement with Richard Dukes, MD, to authorize the county to enter into an agreement with Suda Reddy, MD, providing for the terms and conditions under which she will serve as medical director and perform the duties and responsibilities required by the Georgia Department of Public Health, Office of Emergency Medical Services. Resolution number 2015-275 is a resolution authorizing Commissioner Gail B. Hambrick to partner with Fast Park and Relax to host a job fair at the Virginia B. Gray Recreation Center. This event will be Tuesday, November 17th until <coughs> Thursday, November 19th. The event will be held each day from 9 o'clock a.m. until 2 p.m. and again from 5 o'clock p.m. until 8 o'clock p.m. Excuse me. Is that corrected on your... Um because it's, it's reading two days, but you read it as three, which is correct. Yes, the resolution says Tuesday until Thursday. Okay. So that it's, it's three days. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Next is resolution <clears throat> number 2015-276, which is a resolution providing for the conveyance of Clayton County's interest in Linda Avenue, Eason Drive, also known as, also known as Eastern Avenue, and Brenda Avenue, also known as Brenda Street, lying and being in land lot 13 of the 13th land district of Clayton County, Georgia, to authorize the county to convey the subject right of way to the property owners, to authorize the chairman to execute the quick claim deed and conveyance of, of, 
and otherwise to perform all acts necessary to accomplish the intent of this resolution. And the next one I have is resolution 2015-277, which we listed as a discussion item. With the board's consent, I will go ahead and read that now. It is a resolution authorizing Clayton County to enter into an intergovernmental agreement with the City of Morrow for the provision of emergency communications services, or E911 services, and to authorize the chairman to execute the agreement and to otherwise perform all acts necessary to accomplish the intent of this resolution, to authorize the chief financial officer to amend the budget where necessary to reflect an appropriate revenue source and expense relating thereto, to provide an effective date of this resolution and for other purposes. All right, there's any discussion centered around this? Yeah. Um, you guys I, want to make a motion in a second first? Well, I, I, okay, go on. Make a motion a second on something. It's a motion. <laughs> is that a motion? You make, I'll make the motion. You, is there a second? I'll second. Probably move them second. Okay, is there any discussion, questions? Uh, yes, uh, Deidre, when you were, when you talked to me about these, you left it with me like there were two choices, and I'm not clear on either choice. I know we're going to vote on one of them, but I mean, we'll choose right. one of them or whatever. We're not that's that's Lake City. That's Lake City. This is Lake City. This is no, but you, no, 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 no. You told me about two options we have for tomorrow. And so. Yes, ma'am. If I, if I misled you, my correction, it was really about the two options with Lake City. Okay. But only one option with tomorrow. Okay. All right. Tomorrow is going to give us $100,000 plus their E911 fees. Yes, ma'am. That's correct. Is that the amount they were spending before uh, changing over? How much have they been spending on the E911? Ms. Riddick, do you, can you come forward and uh, address that question? You're asking what the budget for the department is. It's about seven hundred thousand dollars, but that's fully staffed. I'm sorry. Could you state your name for me? Right. Sylvia Reddick, the city manager for the city of Morrow. So our the budget for that department is seven hundred thousand between six hundred and fifty and seven hundred thousand annually. And we're getting one hundred. No. How much is, are you receiving the nine one one fees? Our nine one one fees are uh, like hundred and forty thousand annually. But it's been costing you seven hundred. That's well, they were fully staffed. Their staff. Full, we, we had ten full-time dispatchers. But if I may, that's for all of our calls, which are six hundred sixty-eight thousand calls a year. But the only thing that the county would be servicing are our emergency calls, which run about twelve thousand a year. Any other questions? Thank you, Mr. Reddick. Hearing none, those in favor, aye. 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 Oh, I oh, wait a minute. Hold on. I just had a quick, quick question for the medical director. Termination of contract. I want to make sure. Are there? Is there any termination language or notification or contract buyout or anything that this consideration would put us up to, would subject us to? No, sir. The, the current contract has a 10-day notification clause. Um, so Dr. Reddy's contract will not take effect until the 16th of this month. Okay. Which Good will enough. give us from now to then to notify. Thank you. No further questions. Okay. Those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. Resolution number 2015-271 is a resolution to amend the Clayton County PY 2015 Annual Action Plan to allow for the recapture and reallocation of funding to administer the Student Housing Initiative Program, which is supported by the Community Development Block Grant, the Home Investment Partnership Act, and Emergency Solutions Grant Programs. Is there a motion? I'll make the motion. Is there a second? There is a second. It fails due to the lack of a second. Resolution number 2015-278 is, and this initial language is going to be the same, is a resolution authorizing Clayton County to enter into an intergovernmental agreement with the City of Lake City for the provision of fire services 
Emergency Management Services and Emergency Communication Services uh, to authorize the chairman to execute the agreement and to otherwise perform all acts necessary to accomplish the intent of this resolution, to authorize the chief financial officer to amend the budget where necessary to reflect an appropriate revenue source and expense relating thereto, to provide an effective date of this resolution and for other purposes, and this resolution separate from the 279 will authorize Lake City to levy a tax upon its residents as compensation for the services contemplated in the intergovernmental agreement. Okay. Is there a motion? Mr. Chairman, if I'm see if I say this right, I'd like to make a motion to remove and if that's seconded, does that allow us to discuss and then vote on removing it if we were to choose 279? I would think Am that. Am I saying that right? You're removing if 278? I want to propose that. His motion will be to remove to, uh, 278. And then when we went to 279, then I would assume we have to vote on that separately anyway. Correct. Can we, can we have the chief I explain the difference in the two? I'll get an it's a, it's a financial of, thing. If, it's a financial thing. Right. I mean, you I can know, let him well, talk I about it. I can answer that really easily. Uh, I would rather okay. <laughs> hear it from the chief. But we still need a first and a second. Yeah. Absolutely. So did you make a motion? Uh, if, if I'm I saying that right, I make a motion to, to not consider. To remove this from To remove this from consideration. Oh, oh, which one? 278? 278. Okay. Okay. Is there a second? I'll second it. Probably moved and second. Any other discussion, though? Do you want to hear from the chief? Uh, no, not if we're going to remove it. Okay. And there's no okay. need. Those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. That's removed. Okay. That. <laughs> resolution number 2015-279 is a resolution authorizing Clayton County to enter into an intergovernmental agreement with the city of Lake City for the provision of fire services, emergency management services, and emergency communications services this resolution will authorize the county to create a special tax district within the boundaries of lake city as compensation for the services contemplated in the intergovernmental agreement so motion so moved is there a second second probably moving second any questions hearing none those in favor aye aye, aye. aye. opposed it's unanimous Mr. Chairman and members of the board. Oh, after we took that, oh, oh, right. that was an executive session for everybody. real estate and litigation. litigation. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Who's presenting? It's Mr. John Johnson present to present. To present item number 20. Good evening, Chair, Board. I have Miss uh, Deborah Stone with me. <laughs> I respectfully request the uh, extension of Mrs. Stone's contract between the Clayton County and herself. Um, her contract is due to end December the 31st, 2015, and I would like to ask for an extension of six months from January 1st, 2016 to June 30th of 2016. Mrs. Um, Stone has spearheaded a pilot program which dealt with 300 youth of color from um, Forest Park Middle, Mundus Mill Middle, North Clayton Middle, Point South, and North Clayton High School. And one of the functions that Mrs. Stone had was monitoring the kids of at risk for suspension, expulsion, arrest, and the dropout rates of these young men. I, I, I didn't hear that part. It, it does what now? I didn't, I didn't understand the last sentence. She was monitoring these 300 youths, black African Americans, um, monitoring those kids who are at risk for suspension, dropout rates, arrests, and expulsions from those schools. And uh, the grant, that should, have, that should be probably about $17,115 left at the end when the grant uh, or her contract expires. 17,100? $115. And that's gonna be enough compensation for her? For six months. For six months. Yes. My question. So there's no impact to the. There's no impact to the county. The money is already in there, um, and that money was left because there was a prior employee there that did not take the medical benefits that was offered with the grant, 
but chose to take uh, the medical benefits that was provided by her father. Just curious, you say she's monitoring these students to make sure, or, or no, you say they're monitoring them. What exactly are you doing? I mean, what, what strategies are in place besides monitoring, monitor them? And this is just for my knowledge, for my knowledge, or do you have um, data to show how many kids or whatever you deem at risk, how many of those have you kept and their academics so far after working with them? Great question. Yes, the monitoring piece is to ensure service delivery, quality of service delivery, progress of students, and most importantly to see, are we on track for meeting our goal, keeping kids in school out of court? What does progress look like? How do we quantify that? So that is the ultimate goal. You hit the nail on the head, you couldn't have said it any better. That's my purpose, is to look at outcomes, data. How do we prove that this is effective? So that's the monitoring piece. So is anything done with this monitoring? Um, specifically, perhaps actually I don't understand your question. Uh, okay, once you monitor these kids, does anybody step in and, uh, and assist with that? with whatever your findings are? This is under so, the system of care. Right. right, this is under the system of care and it's with the School to Justice Partnership. Mm -hmm. So we come together with the executive board and we let them know what our outcomes are showing so that we can uh, effectively move forward and strategically and having effective programming. What works with the kids, let's capitalize on that. What doesn't work, let's change it up. Okay, that's, that's what I know. Yes, sorry so, about that. Thank you. And, and again, I'm sorry for prolonging. I, I, it's just for my benefit. So your, your monitoring, does that include working with the families of the students or are you just doing this at the schools during the day? Or are you working with the counselors? The kids are being mentored at home. They're being monitored at home with counselors going directly into the homes after they come out of school. You, the counselors from your department or counselors from the schools or? Counselors from the school okay. and wraparound services. Okay. I have a question. What what would have happened if the entire amount had been used by the prior employee had they been using or utilizing the medical benefits? What would have happened in this case? Good question. Ms. Tom? So that I can answer your question effectively. Are you saying what would happen to my position? Right. So you're, it, it appears to me that the only reason there's an extension is because there's extra money. Correct. So had there not been extra money, what would have happened? To be perfectly frank with you, I am very committed to this work, and it does need to move forward. So the work will continue. The question is really will there be compensation for it or not? Additional compensation. No, compensation period. You've not because been compensated? My contract ends the end of December. So we are asking for an extension from January to June. And that work will need to be done, so I will see it through to completion, to fruition. Um, however, at this time, other than the monies that you're looking at, there is no additional money. So yes, the work will get done. The question is whether or not there will be compensation for if this extension is approved. Thank you. Any other questions? Mr. Chairman, we need a motion. What would happen to the funds if this wasn't approved? Would they just lapse back to the state? It would be de-obligated, de yes, sir. All right, any other questions for them? All right, here and there. And if it's a grant, I will say this. If it's a grant, if it goes back to the state, would that reduce the amount of potential grant funds for the following year? Yes, it would. Okay. All right, I'm going to make the motion uh, to approve. Is there a second? Second. I'll probably move in second. Any other questions? Hearing none, those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. Mr. Chair, um, not you guys. Thank you. I'm Thank you. Going back to when Ms. Bright presented hers, and I know we did some reclass in the sheriff's office or some restructuring, whatever it was. When we have these items, can we get a, some kind of analysis of you know, the impact for the next two years. I, I think I mentioned that at the last meeting. So I know, when, you know, when people say, well, we're gonna use this to create this position, we're gonna eliminate that or whatever. 
And, you know, perhaps, yes, for this year, as um, Commissioner Rook was saying, that leftover money was there this year, but are we knowing going forward for each of these positions, you know, what the impact's gonna be for the next couple of years? And if we can just have that, I'm asking the board if you. But well, we already did that analysis, and then but we didn't incorporate it into the budget. So now we're just still picking and choosing like we always have. And, and that's what I'm saying. But at least if somebody's bringing it before us, we will know what the impact is going to be for the next two years. Because it sounds good when you say, "Well, I got leftover money from somebody's medical. I got leftover money from this and that." But what's going to be the impact in the next right. two years? So even if we could just have that as we vote. That's what I'm asking if the board would agree with me on that. I, would, I don't think I definitely would. agree, right? Yeah. Is that a problem? No. Having no. Together, yeah. put together. It's always considered, if you recall, Ms. Bivens will constantly say, you know, for next year's budget, we will need to cut that to keep the savings moving. So we'll work with Ms. Bright to provide that uh, data for you. Okay, thank you. For how many years? How many years down the road, other than just well, that typically one? typically there's current year, next year. Is that what you're thinking about? For no, for I'm thinking you're asking for further down the road. Is that correct? Well, like I Each said, year if you, you just... balance the budget, so. Yeah, if you just give me the impact, you know, for the next two years, I mean, just... The your current this year and then next right. budget as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, so we'll know next year, because when you start looking at that budget, we're not going to look at those individual yeah, positions absolutely. like that. And it I'm just... Right, and right. it's just going to increase. So. All right, Madam Clerk. Okay. Item number 21 is an appointment to the Civil Service Board to fill the expiring term of Ms. Choice Lancaster as a post three representative. The term is for three years, expiring on December 31st, 2018. This appointment comes from the elected officials of Clayton County, and they have reappointed Choice Lancaster. The Board of Commissioners would just need to ratify the reappointment. All right, I'll make the motion to ratify. Is there a second? Second. Probably move second. Any questions? Hearing none, those in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? Nay. It's four to one. Item number 22 is the appointment to the Department of Behavior Health and Developmental Disabilities Region 3 Advisory Council to fill a vacancy formerly held by Mr. Brent Benedetti. The term is for three years, expiring on April 2nd, 2016. This is a full board appointment. Are there any nominations? I'd like to nominate Deanna Williams. Is there a second? Second. Probably moving second. Any questions? Hearing none. Those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? That's unanimous. Madam Clerk, Madam Clerk, before we go to executive section, I will, uh, Mayor Oswald, who is here, would like to say a few words. So I'm going to call him to the podium real quick. Chairman and distinguished board, I want to thank you on the behalf of the city of Lake City for your going through all of our meetings, putting all the pieces of the puzzle together. And I would call a lot of different names, but I know if I did, I'd leave somebody out. So I just want to thank you for us getting together on our fire department. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mayor. And also, before we end, uh, I think Chief Merkelson has um, the new person mm -hmm. for the medical position here. If we could meet Chief her, if you could introduce, introduce her. her for us. Yeah. Medical director. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, it's, it's my pleasure to introduce to you Dr. Suda Reddy, um, who on the 16th will be assuming our, um, our role as medical director here in the county. So she's been well versed on, on what your vision for health care in this county is along with this department's vision, um, specifically the community treatment units and what they will bring to this county. And she, she shares the same um, excitement and vision that we do. So, so thank you for, for allowing her to come to work here. And I, I think her results will, will be tremendously felt in this community. Doctor, would you like to say anything? Um, I think the programming that you are initiating is innovative, it's groundbreaking, and I'm very privileged to be a part of it. Well, on behalf of the board, welcome. We're glad you're here. We're looking for great things to happen. So appreciate all that you are going to do for us. Thank you. Motion to go into executive session. On real estate and litigation. On the real. So moved. Yes, on that. <laughs> Thank you. 
<laughs> Probably moved in second. Those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Motion to reconvene. So moved. Uh, sucking it probably moving second those in favor aye. Aye. Opposed, it's unanimous. Mr. Hancock. Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, two things quickly. I, I obtained your approval some weeks ago uh, to attempt to settle a case, uh, a claim by a lady whose name is Nikita Moore. Ms. Moore was involved in an automobile wreck with a Clayton County police officer on April 27, 2015 at the intersection of Mount Zion Boulevard and Mount Zion Road. She uh, was hospitalized, uh, I think she got out of the hospital about 30 days ago. She was in intensive care for about four months uh, as a result of that wreck and incurred medical expenses, which we have verified of uh, over $700,000. As, as I told you, the, the statutory cap for the county is $500,000 uh, plus property damages. And we had recommended to you and, and you've authorized and we've now gotten a settlement agreement to settle her case for $500,000 for personal injuries and $4,420 for property damage. Uh, I have an executed release and I just ask you to, on the record, approve that settlement so we can process it for payment. All right, is that motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Probably moving second, any questions? Hearing none, those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. Next. And the, the second thing I have is uh, the cell tower uh, that we discussed uh, at the last meeting uh, and uh, as indicated at that time we have entered into a settlement agreement and a consent order with the SBA, SBA Tower 5 LLC the result of which would require that they uh, or that, that you issue the permit uh, for the construction of the cell tower grant the two variances that they requested and in exchange the county would receive $15,000 which would be used for uh, uh, improvement of the Jester's Creek Trail area uh, at the county's discretion. They're, they're merely making the donation. They have no obligation to make any installation or anything. We're going to do that. The county will do that. And, and I just need your authority to execute that settlement agreement. Is there a motion? I moved. Is there a second? I'll second it. Probably moving second. Any questions? Hearing none, those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. Thank you. Motion to adjourn. I move. Second. I think I'm supposed to call for that. <laughs> I wasn't calling. I was Mo saying. Motion to adjourn. No, he's calling it. Second. <laughs> Probably moving second. Those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed. I don't even need it.